What's up, family? This is Sensei from Ride Fit Nation, and welcome to the channel. Today, I want to talk to my riders. I don't care if you are a professional rider. I don't care if you are a beginner, novice. It doesn't matter what type of rider you are. I am going to be talking about some things that I think most of us need to be aware of because, you know, we are in a day and age now where there are crazy drivers out there. There are crazy riders out there. There are people who ain't paying no attention. Nobody advise on their phone. Um, on the, on the good side, everybody's upgrading their bikes. We're all doing work. We're getting ready for Daytona. We're getting ready for Milwaukee. We're getting ready for all kinds of different trips coming up, right? But, but I'm going to touch on some things that can be uh, lifesavers and things that can just be eye openers. So I hear a lot of people, let's, let's go right into the customization of your bike first. So my bike on Beast, I did a lot of work on this bike. I, all of my cosmetics, is all aftermarkets, okay? The whole entire back is from Bad Dad. My lowers is from TCMT and Amazon. My um, spikes on my bike is from Advan Black. The windshield is not Harley Davidson, okay? That's not Harley Davidson. My grips, not Harley Davidson. I'm not gonna go through all the names. All the parts that I use, customize, is aftermarket and that's just for the cosmetic stuff my hard bags my, my tour pack king tour pack same exact thing the the rack up there that's harley davidson all right those things are harley this is harley my my, my, my top rail for my bag is, is harley so what am i getting at anything that's cosmetic i don't care if you go oem or if you go aftermarket it's no biggie but when it comes to the engine parts of your bike the functional parts of your bike, the foot control, the brake levers, the clutch levers, the, um, the shift linkage, all right? Do not go and just buy a bunch of stuff on eBay or Amazon. Can you go aftermarket? Of course, there are companies like Arlen Ness, Bad Dad, um, Native Customs. There's a lot of companies that you can get really good stuff from. Um, um, Dennis Kirk, so many things you can get good things from, however, when it comes to things like your shift linkage, this is your shift linkage. This is what, when you change your gear, the shift linkage is right here. So every time you change your gear, this is the rod that connects. It's the bridge to your gears, okay? If this is broken, you ain't changing nothing. So I can't tell you how many times I hear people buying these amazing looking shift linkage on eBay or on Amazon for like 40 bucks they look good, but then they break. And there, there's so many tests that shows that under tension, they will break over time. So make sure that when you're buying your shift linkage, when you're buying your lower controllers, your, your pegs, your, your heel shifters, your, high, your highway pegs, do not purchase those things uh, cheap. Do not go cheap. Even the ones that go in here, like I have the, I have the frame mounted pegs, right? I'm not using the cheap ones, I made a mistake and bought a cheap one. I have a video, I bought it from Amazon. I wanted to see how the quality was. After I did some read-ups on it, you see people that broke their shift pegs, your highway pegs. Imagine, you're on the highway, and you were riding, you were enjoying your time, you put your foot up, la da da, bam, that thing breaks, and all of a sudden, you lose control. Your foot hit the ground, and then you're on the ground. Um, tongue kissing the floor, you see what I'm saying? We don't want any of that stuff. So, another thing I'll tell you too, when it comes to like your wheels, get rotors changed up regularly. Get your brakes changed up regularly. My bike, when I got the fat tire put on the bike, I was getting the sensors that was coming on. So that's this kind of an update to that, that video. I had to change the, um, the, the, the ear pressure sensor. I always forget the name of that sensor. But I, um, I'm gonna get that name for you as a matter of fact. As I'm talking, you're gonna see me looking down because I'm gonna look through these emails so I can give you the information of what you need so you can know the name of the sensor. I also had to get the, um, the rotors changed out because the rotors had a little bend on it, right? And when that's bent, guess what? The bike is gonna ride weird. So the rotors were not, was, was not on point. And what else? I had to get the, uh, the new brakes because once you get your rotors changed out, you gotta get new brakes. So knowing all of those things, making sure your bike is functional, make sure you check your bike. Because I work on my bike a lot, 
I'm able to feel the difference in my bike. I'm able to feel all of those different things that's just not right on my bike. And then I can talk to the, to the uh, technician, whoever's doing those, those things on a bike, and I could express to them what I'm looking for. So the sensor, what I'm talking about, is I believe it's a TPMS sensor. And let, let me go here just to confirm with you so you could know what I'm saying. If you happen to change out your rims, like what I did, you need to make sure you have the right parts and it's a yeah, TPMS sensor. And that's the sensor that really, that the system can read it. And when that's not read on it, the red security light is gonna go on, your tire inflation level is gonna go on, and your traction control light is gonna go on. Those three lights are gonna go on. Now those three lights are very important. So why would I opt out to not get the sensor when I'm riding all the time? I wanna make sure that my bike has no warning signals. If it's warning me about something, I wanna know about it. So if I don't get the sensor, how am I gonna know if my tire pressure is low? You see what I'm saying? So get all those things situated. If you're gonna get lights, you can go aftermarket. Go aftermarket all day. You got Custom Dynamics. You got all these companies. They're all aftermarkets. They're not Harley dealership stuff. They're all those parts, go aftermarket. You're not gonna hurt yourself. But my, my engine, I got the stage two done. On the stage two, I know some of you might disagree, but I went with um, Screaming Eagles. I have a video talking about why I went with Screaming Eagles. I'm gonna have no regret about going with Screaming Eagles because if I'm driving Screaming Eagle, if I'm gonna go on a road trip, like for example, on the 23rd, I'm going down to Miami, right? We're riding down to Miami. Uh, guess what? If something happens to the engine and it happens to be anything that has to do with my upgrades on my cams, you know what's gonna happen? Um, the Harley dealership will likely have all the parts because I'm using Screaming Eagle parts. And I'm not racing my bike, so I don't need to go extra and get all these extra aftermarket amazing products. So there's some amazing products. But I'm always thinking about the long run, right? So if something goes wrong, chances are Harley Davidson will have the parts for my bike, right? The fat tire kit on my bike. I opted to go 18 inches and I didn't need to get no big fat tires in 21s. Why? The 18 inch tire, chances are Harley Davidson will have an 18 inch tire. They're not gonna have a 21 inch. It's not gonna be the same, okay? It's gonna be very hard to get that tire. You understand what I'm saying so far? So you gotta look at your bike and you have to remember, make sure you get the things that will, that will benefit you and your bike. And I understand everybody's pockets is different. We're not all rich. We all have things that we're going through. I get that. But if you have to take a little, a little time off to save up a couple of bucks to go the right way when it comes to your engine to keep you safe, then so be it. If you're gonna do a tank cover, you're gonna do a center console, you know, go ahead and do that. If you're gonna get handlebars, do not buy cheap handlebars. Do not get handlebars, because once again, that's life-threatening. That is life-threatening, okay? Do not get cheap handlebars. Make sure all these things that you buy, your cables, all these things that, that goes to the function of your bike, make sure you're good. And always remember to check your tires. You can do a visual inspection at times, because. They say you should check your bike every time, but who got time to do that? We don't. Let's just be real, because I'm a realist, right? But get used to looking at your tires, your front tire, your rear tire. Make sure your, oils, your oil is changed. You have your, your primary covers. Everything is taken off. Your, your, your technician is checking your, your clutch. All these things. Make sure you have that stuff unpacked. Make sure you have all of your fluids. Everything is up to date on your bike, because I'm telling you, this stuff will be amazing and it will save your life. Your tires, don't be cheap in your tires. Get the Harley, the Harley uh, warranty for the tires because you never know. I know it might be a little bit expensive in the beginning, but you know what? Knowing that my tires are covered, I'm good. If something happens to my bike, I go to Harley, they change, the, they change it. When I need to get my, 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 um, my tune up and all that stuff, it's already covered for. I don't have to worry about that. I like to see the zero dollars, even though it's not zero dollars. But I'm just saying for me, right? So make sure that when you're riding your bike, treat your bike the way your bike should treat you. Treat it well, because it's gonna take you a long way, it's gonna bring you out, and it's gonna bring you home safe. If you don't start taking these precautions, I promise you, you're gonna be in trouble. And here's another thing, my last thing. So my helmet, I was looking at my helmet, right? And I, I realized that my helmet has a little crack in it. And once your helmet has a crack, it's garbage. I, I'm, I'm gonna ride with this for now because I don't wanna ride with the half face right now. I'm still gonna keep my full face, but I'm gonna order a helmet. Why? Because this helmet is pretty much 
not safe anymore. You see, and I'm being dumb saying I'm going to ride with it, but I am. I'm, like I said, I'm a realist. I'm going to ride with this thing until I get my other helmet. I prefer to ride with this than ride it with the, with the, with the um, half face all the time. Okay, so that's my point, guys. If there's anything I miss, oh yeah, I, I keep this in my bike. By the way, this shift linkage, even though this shift linkage is Harley, it's, o, it's OEM, I still keep this right on my bike. Why? Because most of the guys that I ride with ride road glides. And if something goes wrong, right, then I'm gonna have one. If mine happen to break for any reason, I'm gonna have one. I also keep my tools, I keep my lights, I keep my, uh, my knife, I keep zip ties. Um, I, have to, I have to get um, um, a first aid kit. I have to get the, the ear pump. I have to get those things when I'm traveling. And that's what I'm saying. The list goes on and on. Be safe, guys. And that's all I'm asking y'all, right? Be safe. Okay, so this is it. I'm done yapping. I'm done talking. I'm about to get myself ready for my next client. That's why y'all see me looking at my phone, checking my time, talking quickly, and hopefully you can hear what I'm saying. Let's go. Leave your comments and let me know your thoughts on these videos and what are some of the things that you want to talk about and what are some of the things that you want new riders to know about as well, okay? So, this is Sensei telling you, we're going after the miles, we're going after the muscle, we're going after that money, because you're going to need that money for this. You're going to need the muscle for this. And you're going to need the miles, all right? So let's go. I'm out. Peace.